Does having your phone at the front pockets of your jeans affect your penis slash balls? Well, it could. Today, we're back at it again, answering medical questions that you are afraid of or maybe a little embarrassed to ask your doctor. If one person is wanting the answer to a particular question, chances are multiple people are wondering the exact same thing. That's right, you guys are always flooding my comments asking me some really awesome questions. Fair warning, sometimes these questions can get a little bit strange or interesting. But today, we're not holding back and tackling them all. But before we get into it, I'm Dr. Jordan Wagner. I'm an emergency room doctor who treats everything from COVID, you know, gunshot wounds, burns, you name it. I've created this video series to help answer some of your medical questions and the questions that I get from patients each and every day. If you find this video helpful, please do me a favor and subscribe. All right, let's dive right in. Is it true that men can get infertile from swallowing eggshells due to them getting stuck in the penis? Okay, starting out strong with this one. Let's do a quick anatomy review. You are swallowing eggshells, which it's really hard to do to begin with, but if you do swallow it, it goes into your stomach, which then passes through your small intestines, your large intestine, and out the body. It doesn't pass through your walls of any of that type of tissue and get absorbed to then go to your kidneys, to then go to your urine, then get out and you pee it out, right? So that's the only way it would potentially get stuck. You're safe from not being infertile related to eating eggshells. Men being infertile, Fertile, most of the time is related to the sperm itself. It could be from not having good swimmers in the sense of like maybe immature or you're not having enough or you just don't make any. Going to the doctor and just getting a sperm count and just having them look under a microscope is the easiest way, the most non-invasive way to just check to make sure you have enough sperm. And then from there, if there's an issue, the doctor can then go down the, the further road to figure it out. Why are some people heterosexual, some bisexual and some homosexual? I know you're born like that and can't change it. Is it hormonal, genetic? Great question. Being somebody of science and medicine, the exact answer is actually still out there. But what do I mean by that? Scientists actually say that there are multiple factors, genetic, environmental, hormonal. These are all reasons why somebody would potentially have an orientation one way or the other. And they basically come down to saying that there is a biological basis, but they can't give a definitive answer. And if somebody's actually giving you an exact definitive answer, I'd ask them to maybe show you the research or where they came up with that because at this current time, there's not any definitive answer that leads you one way or the other. Dr. Wagner, please settle this frat boy question. John gets into an accident where he loses both testes. His friend, Tom, donates one of the testes to John and the transplant is a success. A year down the line, John and his wife conceive a child. Is the child genetically John's or Tom's? Great question, and actually it's a point of contention. In this case, there was consent by Tom to give John his testicle. That is okay, but then the question is, Tom's testicle now becomes a sperm donor. There's a medical legal issue related to that, so a lot of hospitals don't do testicle transplants. They'll do other all the other anatomy down there, but they typically don't do testes. So yes, there's more likely a chance that the child would be related to the donor versus versus the body that it is in. Not a bad question. It's actually a quite controversial question. If you have more questions about that one, please ask. It's a very complicated topic and a very good one, even though it was kind of a goofy question. Are vapes or cigarettes worse in your opinion? Well, my opinion as a doctor is they are both bad for you. That is my answer. But current research shows that the vapes are probably better than cigarettes. But think about it this way. Cigarettes were thought of as being pretty good and even healthy when they first came out. And now 20, 30, 40, 50 years later, we're seeing all the detrimental effects with cigarettes do. So I'm only proposing a question back. What do you think the potential for vapes could be? You shouldn't be inhaling anything into your lungs that isn't air. If you can't breathe, you're dead. Why would you put at risk an organ to fail? Then you fail. It's not worth it. This is an embarrassing question I have myself. Is it normal to grow hair on your butthole during puberty? No one told me if that's supposed to happen or not. Well, it could happen. So when somebody goes through puberty, you get a lot of hormonal changes, your body changing into an adult, different things happen, all different processes, growing hair in areas you don't want it to grow is one of them. So yes, unfortunately, it is a part of life and sometimes through puberty, some people are just more apt to getting hair in different places. Is semen 
for real good for your skin or your teeth? Okay, this is a interesting question. I've heard jokes and things stated like, oh, semen's good for your skin. Yeah, no, it's really not, okay? There are much better products out there. Vitamin C or retinol, these type of products are made for your skin, help anti-aging, not semen. This all came from, there's a component within semen, firmine, and basically it's a type of, potentially could be an antioxidant. You need a ton of it and it's not good for you. No. And then you have the issue of infections that semen can potentially bring gross. Please don't do this. Then you'll actually have someone to say that, well, semen has like calcium and zinc in it. No. The amount that you would need of semen to have any benefit of those is astronomical, like gallons. So no, please do not try to convince anybody that it's good for you one way or the other. We should not be spreading this out all over our skin. It's gross. I have a hairy face as a woman. What causes that? Something called a hirsutism. Facial hair on a woman in a pattern that's similar to a man. Every human being has hair. We have, if you look, if you're a female, you potentially have like very small, like peach fuzz hair all over your body. A guy, potentially, different hormones have basically darker, thicker hair than a woman would do. And it's pretty much related to that. There's a couple different diagnoses that you would want to worry about. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, basically where your hormones are just a little bit off due to different hormone upregulation or downregulation because we all have testosterone and estrogen and progesterone in our body so it just has to do with the balance does having your phone at the front pockets of your jeans affect your penis slash balls? Well, it could. So as each cell phone generation continues, the amount of emitted radio frequency has started to increase, right? So this is non-ionizing radiation. It's kind of like cigarettes at the moment. We're not exactly sure what these long-term effects are going to do. Yes, they are studying it. And yes, they are warning people to be careful. So if anything's ever admitting uh, a radio frequency is close to your body. You probably want to have them away from you. Like don't sleep next to it uh, when you're going to bed or you know, put it away, which you should anyway. So there is potentially some detrimental effects. We just don't know exactly all of them that have occurred yet. So time will potentially tell. So just be careful out there, be smart about it and do your best to mitigate wearing your device like 24 seven. Those were good questions. Some were kind of goofy and you can giggle about, but these are individuals that actually have these questions. I ask you all totally be respectful. And if you do have questions, ask. I'm more than happy to answer your any weird, awkward, embarrassing question. All right, that's been some thought provoking questions or maybe questions you didn't want to ask with me, Dr. Wagner. Let me know in the comments if you have any other medical questions or topics that you'd like me to answer. Maybe I'll include them in the next video. Please make sure you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on. When you do that and you hit that like button, you let YouTube know that you'd like to see more fun videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.